Hello everyone, my name is Mishai Mugbil and I'm an inner source coach. I work with organizations in order to help them implement open source processes and workflows for their development teams, as well as non-coding business units. I've been involved in the open source movement for 25 years. I'm also the lead organizer for Open Tech Summit Thailand, Thailand's only international open source conference. So you may ask yourself, why piggyback? When I think of the word piggyback, it always elicits this image of the joy of just jumping on and going along for the ride, which I think is characteristic of many open source projects. And I think it's key to the success of the open source movement. Happy teams are, after all, productive teams. I remember working for a company over 20 years ago when open source was new and the servers were regularly crashing. We secretly replaced them with Linux and open source services. The end result was a stable server environment and happiness all around. I would like to think that there are three key takeaways here. One, that open source processes produces very high quality software. Two, that the open source mindset brings about a pragmatic approach to problem solving. And three, then this pragmatic approach often leads to the clandestine adoption of open source in order to solve real world problems. And I find the teams I quote sometimes introduce inner source to their organizations in such a manner in order to get things done. Since inner source is the application of open source practices and methodologies to in-house teams, for, the, for this presentation, I use the term open source and intersource interchangeably. So let's start with Agile. The fundamentals of Agile are enshrined in the Agile Manifesto and everything else I think are implementation details. But from my observations, I think Robert Martin says it best when he points out in his book, Clean Agile, that Agile is a set of principles practices and disciplines that help sm small teams build small software projects. DevOps, on the other hand, came later. Based on the realization that software doesn't exist in isolation, it needs to interact with other software and ultimately people. So DevOps brings forward this idea of holistic software development that is not removed from its environment and human handlers and accounts for the entire life cycle. So let's take an example of a typical organization that I see often, perhaps with a front-end dev team and a back-end dev team, both working for different departments. If team A requires a feature that requires team B to implement, they're stuck. This affects team's A sprint, product delivery schedules, and subsequently competitiveness and profitability for the whole company. Some may say this problem only exists for large organizations, but the smallest organization in which I've seen this problem manifest itself is a company with five developers. So what happens if I may use a bit of agile jargon here is that it becomes difficult to synchronize the two sprint backlogs, increasing time to value delivery. In English, what this means is because work for a team is decided in advance for a period that is typically between one to four weeks, an urgent requirement from team A might not enter the work queue of team B until the next cycle begins, causing a delay. On top of that, Conway's law observed around 50 years ago states, organizations who design systems are constrained to produce designs which are copies of the communication structures of these organizations. And we see this all the time where organizations write software that represents existing organization structures, but doesn't necessarily represent the best way to solve a problem or deliver value. Based on the examples I cited previously, is the software that reflects the organization structures that produces team A and team B really the best way to solve a problem? Maybe, maybe not. So where does inner source come in? One way the inner source solves this problem is by having problem communities where code is a shared resource across all teams who have a stake in it. The result is that change can be made in the code when it's needed and there's a process in place to handle feature change no matter if the contributor is inside or outside the team just as open source projects typically will accept walk-in contributions this is how i see conway's law being disrupted somewhat because teams are, are working on smaller components they have leeway to figure out just what the best implementation details for work to get done actually is just for additional information, I have taken out a comparison table from a research paper titled, Is Open Source Software Development Essentially an Agile Method? That shows many similarities between open source and agile. You can see the main point of difference lies in the fact that open source software development is designed to be geographically distributed as opposed to agile's co-located. Additionally, it features commonly owned requirements and is designed for largely dispersed teams with smaller products as opposed to agile smaller teams and smaller products. 
This may be of benefit in this day and age where organizations base themselves more and more around loosely remote distributed teams producing very complex software. You can also see inner source and agile have many commonalities, which makes it reasonably easy to slip inner source into organizations who are already implementing agile. In fact, there are some who say open source is essentially distributed agile. Here are a few interesting ideas for organizations that have adopted Agile, who are also thinking about adopting their open source way of working. Some of these have been used, others are still very much in the exploratory phase, but I hope it gives you an idea of the potential for this way of working. So first of all, stand-ups are replaced with this. Uh, uh, so first of all, stand-ups can be replaced with status updates via chat rooms, as opposed to a physical face-to-face stand-up, making stand-ups short, asynchronous, and Quite effective. Then, Inner Source encourages you to find opportunities to de decouple and modularize your code. This is because smaller components are inherently easier to understand, easier to test, easier to change, and potentially being more reusable across the entire organization, making them easier to contribute to. For many of you, think about how many times that login widget has been re-implemented across your organization. Then, mission-focused chat rooms and workspaces with multiple stakeholders. Anyone in the organization who is interested in solving a problem can join the communication and discuss the issues from various perspectives. This comprehensive and rich dialogue can function better than storyboarding, ensuring that the voices of stakeholders are truly heard. Think of a scenario where marketing is about to launch a new product that involves data analytics and front-end team to do A-B testing, as well as customer relations and ops team to deal with the influx of orders. Having communication channels involving all the major stakeholders can be innovative and, and, and enriching. Think of the variety of the comments in any community forum that you find online. On top of that, comprehensive documentation and automation for onboarding, coding standards, support, reduces frictions for new contributors, and reduces the time it takes for a new contributor to be productive on a, on a code base. This has the added benefit of reducing human resource pressures on teams and reduce operational risk for the organization as knowledge is not siloed into any one person's mind. Then backlogs for each problem community is a way to prioritize tasks for contributors. This is still quite experimental, but each component can have a backlog as decided by its community, whichever form that community takes in your organization. Once what is needed to be done on a given component has been established, then tasks can be added to individual teams' backlog in order to be able to effectively allocate team members to the tasks. DevOps, on the other hand, is a relatively new discipline. discipline. And the collaborative nature of inner source fits right into DevOps. Many of these may be a bit redundant, but I've seen changes occurring before. More sharing of scripts and playbooks with the ability for outside teams to make changes, leading to more self-service and less duplication of effort. I've seen organizations where developers and DevOps people communicate regularly as you're supposed to in DevOps, but where ops does not allow anyone to touch their code. This way we open up ops recipes to external contributors as well. Same thing works the other way around with ops being able to contribute to outputs from developers. Community projects can be started in order to improve operations and therefore value delivery across the entire organization. An example of such a project can be, for example, the reduction of deployment time for new releases, uh, the reduction of toil, or the implementation of a new testing framework. Some organizations are still using vanilla Git, so there's an adoption of modern open source workflows, allowing for pull requests from outside the teams, leading to a better developer experience all around. This also makes collaboration much easier. Then there's an even greater emphasis on automated tests because of the greater need to trust and ensure quality code contribution from outside the team. Automated tests allow you to move faster because software can test a thousand times faster than humans can. Inner source may afford new opportunities for various teams in your organization to develop tests together, reducing resources. And the additional collaboration allows for more comprehensive tests leading to higher quality software. So in conclusion, if your organization is already adopting Agile and DevOps, bringing in inner source practices could perhaps make your life better. That's all we have time for today. If you'd like to talk more, you can reach out to me on any of these channels listed on the slides. Thank you very much.